the sciencey stuff, it's that's fine too because it's that's I've also tailored it for that. But it's important to kind of to get across the the sciencey stuff, the the more rigorous stuff because you need that stuff in order for people to take grounding seriously. And you know, uh, that's also another reason I wrote it is because like when you tell people about grounding, they're just like, oh, that's that's bullshit. That's like uh, that's that's energy medicine. That's that holistic alternative stuff, and and it's bullshit. But uh, so the book is kind of that weapon for them. It's that tool for them to fall back on. Be like, okay, this person was super skeptical about this, so I'm gonna I'm gonna read this part of the book and. and you know, I'm going to teach them and they'll, they'll, they'll start to, you know, realize how effective grounding really is, how, how based in biochemistry and physics that it actually is. So hopefully, uh, people will, will really enjoy it. You know, it's a good feeling for me too, because the book, so I had this thing, it's called the earth and water library for the past two years. And that's basically all of the, 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 the articles, uh, the lectures, the, the books that I've, I've brought together and kind of compiled them in this library. And so the book kind of came about from that library mm-hmm. and it's a, it's a cool feeling because it also answers some questions that I have. So like, if I haven't studied something for a long time, I'm just like, I'm a little hazy on it. I'm just like, Hey, let me open my book and turn to this page. Like that's a good feeling that I can find everything that I want to know about it in my own book. So, yeah. It'll be cool. I think that's I think that's really important because in general, the people that aren't interested in the science who are just more like, I don't know, like esoteric, like they'll try it. Like they don't really care about the science as much, but the masses mm-hmm. probably want to like look and say like, OK, like this data is actually pointing to the fact that grounding is um, beneficial. And hopefully that would like reverse a lot of the stigma around just like bare feet and just, I don't know, in general, like you walk around barefoot, people start to like look at you weird. Or even if you have your shirt off, they're just like, all right, like this dude's like trying to like flex or something. But it's like, I don't know, just like, I don't know, you want to get as much sun as you can. And if you can ground like with other people that are enjoying it, too, I think that could be a big factor. And I don't know about the. If it like can connect with other people, but just in general, the it makes sense that like if multiple people are grounding together, they might have some more like impact, I guess. Um, that's a uh, that's an interesting point, um, and I've I've talked about that talked about talked about that in the past. So, uh, what happens when you ground is you essentially become an extension of the Earth's electrical field. So the electrons from the Earth go into you, and you become an extension of that field. So, essentially, every other thing that is also grounded becomes an extension of the Earth's electrical field. So, in the moment that you ground, you're connected to every other thing in the world that's also grounded that's also a part of the earth's electrical field so that kind of brings a whole new meaning to to what it means to be connected and so mm-hmm. you you definitely have a vast expanse of connection going on there so so that would be I like with the cool. animals and plants as well yeah. as like other people yeah. that are grounded yes sir yeah that makes sense um i was going to ask you about your your instagram how did you get your pictures so clean and like <laughs> do you have like a photographer or something Oh yeah. Uh, so if you want to be, if you want to be successful on Instagram, you need to invest in, in some good photo equipment. Um, and honestly, man, like with how iPhones are these days, like the iPhone 13, the photos and the videos on that are insane. Like they create a really, really nice bouquet. Um, yeah. And you, and you can get away with a lot with, uh, with a, just an iPhone. You buy, you buy a microphone with that. You can, you can do some damage. But uh, when I when I first started, um, I, I invested in a, in a cheap little camera. But the, the important part is the lens, the lens that you get. So uh, I use these Sigma lenses from uh, Japan. It's really, really, really nice glass. It makes my videos like crisp. It makes my video it makes my photos crisp. Um, but uh, it's a, the sad part is that a, a lot of it's can be comparable to the iPhone 13, the iPhone 13, <laughs> which is, uh, which I guess is a good thing because eventually I, I guess I won't need my camera. I could sell it or something like that. But, um, uh, there are advantages to having the camera. It's a lot more versatile as far as, uh, making videos and all that and, uh, transferring information. But, um, yeah, I use, uh, I use a Canon, a Canon mirrorless camera and some Sigma 
some Sigma Japanese lenses. Um, they're all together, man. It's not like if, if you were to go out and search for my camera equipment, you would spend maybe like 1500, two grand, which is a solid investment. If, if you're, if you're building a business, you'll, you'll make that back eventually. It's, it's a, uh, I think it's worth the investment. So. Have you always been into Greek mythology and like that kind of thing? Or is that, and it seems like a big part of like what you do and kind of tying that yeah. back to like aesthetics and stuff. But how did you get into that? <clears throat> I was obsessed with Greek mythology in high school. I am by no means a Greek mythology scholar. Uh, I just, <laughs> you know, I'm one of those people where I'm just like, who is the Greek goddess or goddess of this? And I'll do yeah. a little research about it. And that's about the extent that I know about it. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the Greek aesthetic has always been in that. That seems to be pretty prevalent in kind of the esoteric space and and uh, a lot of the masculinity space. Um, I'm not I'm not too huge in into the masculinity space, but uh, the esoteric space. The, the you know you'll always see like a, a picture of some Greek sculpture or something like that. And, mm -hmm. uh, it's 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 pretty popular, but um, I don't know, man. I was I was always those were always the 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 parts in um, what. What, what even what class was that even that we learned greek mythology uh i don't know if it was english or or something but that was always like something reading I was, some books about it maybe yeah yeah and yeah. and uh i was always zoned in during during that stuff i was like this stuff is so cool you learn about goddesses and gods that they're fucking throwing you know lightning bolts down at the earth that people like that's that's really cool and it's it's really fantastic to imagine and and think you know well, you know what if it was what if it was real you know it's it's not it's not what i believe in but the aesthetic of it that's you know it's it's peak do you think grounding in general and uh, it's just like a way to get back to like connecting with the earth because i feel like a lot of people are like kind of don't really take the earth they just take it for granted and just the environment in general it's just like kind of whatever they don't really like have any like relationship with it but have you found like grounding is kind of maybe giving you like some sort of like spiritual thing as far as connecting with the earth and having like a greater appreciation for it yeah um that's <clears throat> you can go a lot of different ways with that question i feel like um i it definitely fosters a sense of appreciation because if if once you start to learn about you know something like grounding and you realize just how connected we are meant to be with the earth you start to realize okay we need to take care of this thing and we need to be we need to be nurturing of it because it nurtures us um it's it's something that that uh is is has been i think forgotten and neglected in the past you know 100 years when rubber shoes started to started to come about you know and that's that's a fairly recent thing by the way the the invention of, of rubber sole shoes and um that the insulation that comes along with that that's that's fairly recent but um yeah i, I think learning about something like grounding and implementing it in your life it, it fosters definitely a, a greater appreciation for the world around you and, and helping you realize just how intertwined your environment is with your health. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's probably the best answer I, I could give to that. But uh, I think people are definitely more appreciative of the earth once they find out about, you know, the, the benefits of, of being grounded and electrically connected to it. Hmm. What can people like look forward to seeing from you besides the the Aries groundware, the book, like, is there, are those going to be out soon or more stuff from you? <clears throat> so Aries, I'm, I'm probably going to be crowdfunding in the near future. I'm um, not sure the date yet, but um, so that's, that's, that's TBD. Um, the book I'm hoping, so I'm, I'm, I'm working with an agent to try and get the physical thing out there, but that's, that's its own process. Um, in the meantime, um, hopefully by the end of summer, it'll be complete. All the citations will be in place. The illustrations and everything will be on point. Um, and I'll have it on Amazon, you know, hopefully by the end of summer, beginning of fall, I'm going to narrate it too. 
So once it's, once it gets on Amazon, hopefully it'll be on Audible, and then I'll, I'll narrate it too. And I think that that also adds to you know the the intimacy of of, of reading someone's book is when they narrate it too. Um, you know, I'll, do you have Audible? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> so many so many books have been ruined <laughs> by a bad narrator. Like it's 100%. it's really bad. <laughs> so, so I have so. Many- it means a lot more when it's the actual author who's reading it (laughs) like i don't know just sometimes like you said it'll just get ruined like i don't even want to read it anymore (laughs) and i it's i'm i'm really kind of a target for this but i didn't realize you could sample audio from the audiobooks and so there's so many yeah there's so many audiobooks i'm just like one credit click spend and i hear (laughs) the narrator i'm just like oh no this sucks ass and so Yeah. yeah i uh I sample books now. That's it. That's that's what I learned. So it's a good tip. Um, but yeah, I um, and you know, I don't have a bad voice. I've I've done some some practicing narration in the past, <laughs> and I think it'll be really cool. And um, I'm, it's something I'm really passionate about, and I think people will be able to 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 pick that up once they're listening to it. So, in general, with like the amount of time we spend on screens and stuff, is grounding have the potential to like reverse any of that or if you're grounding, does it matter if you're grounding like outside without your phone or like with your phone? Because I know there is some like EMF, uh, like being ex- excreted from your phone and whatnot. So, and we're just exposed to like blue light in general a lot more than, well, we yeah, <clears throat> never really were getting that much of it before screen. So, yeah. Um, well, what you were talking about just a little bit ago, the, the phones and all that and the, the the TVs and, and the Wi-Fi and all that—that's that's a part of the, the electromagnetic spectrum that's uh, considered radio waves. So these are these are really long long waves in the in the electromagnetic spectrum. There hasn't been any research on that as far as mitigating. So the EMFs they're they're uh, they're they're a topic of great controversy right now. Um, the, the world health organization classifies them as a class two B carcinogen, which, uh, means possibly carcinogenic. And I don't know about you, but that's, that's kind of good enough for me. Um, like, uh, (laughs) uh, but, uh, the, the general recommendation right now is to, is to limit your exposure, but there's, there's been no research on grounding and, and mitigating these, these radio frequencies, um, but there has been research on grounding and mitigating uh, extremely low electromagnetic fields uh, that come from like wiring and power lines, uh, appliances. And those are in the 50 to 60 hertz uh, alternating current range. It's 60 here in the U.S., it's 50 over in the U.K. and, and wherever else. But um, grounding can can reduce those effects. Uh, and that's been shown because when you're when you're surrounded by, you know, these this electronic equipment and these power lines and stuff they'll they'll induce a current on you and that's through a process in physics it's called capacitive coupling and so they'll actually they'll induce a current on the surface of your body which is measurable so when you ground that induced body voltage goes down to zero uh more realistically it's about two negative 200 millivolts which is where you want your body to be um but uh yeah there's been really cool research on that as far as uh dropping that induced body voltage but um there is there is a lot of research on uh the extremely low electromagnetic fields particularly the 50 to 60 hertz uh range and that's a lot of that's um tied to leukemia so the incidence of leukemia and chronic exposure to people um to these these 50 to 60 hertz alternating currents that's that's pretty well, well researched and well cited, but still, you know, there's, there's not a consensus on electromagnetic fields as far as their implications in health, in the literature. Um, obviously I think from a common sense perspective, if you're altering the electrical state of your body through these different frequencies, you're gonna, you're gonna fuck with it. Like if there's just, there's no question about that. The literature may not be there, but from a common sense standpoint, if you got kind of got a basic understanding of physics, biology, and biophysics, you know that these are going to create some changes in your body. So that's all I can say about that. It just makes sense. And like you said, with like the rubber shoes being invented 100 years ago, 
like we just haven't evolved as a species to i think like i don't know just have be healthy like yeah. without kind of incorporating in some of these other practices like grounding or just in general trying to like eat things that were like we would have eaten like a hundred plus years ago so do you have any predictions with that for the future because i know like we can only see like such a small fraction of like light and then um like there's all this energy that's around us but we're not even able to like really know about mm -hmm. it it's not even like talked about really yeah so do you have any that. predictions well we we as a species definitely move too fast for our own good sometimes uh, especially with the, the technology that we invent. Sometimes uh, they end up backfiring on us and, and insulating shoes has definitely been one of those things. But um, I mean, I don't want to say any like negative, any negative predictions or anything. I think in the future... Yeah, the good positive ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, think, I think we're moving towards a more positive towards a more positive light, honestly, because I think people are becoming more and more aware of the negative things in their environment, the things that are in their foods, uh, the shoes that they're wearing, all of these things that were just so generally accepted, things you don't really think about, um, that you're consuming on a daily basis, that you're practicing on a daily basis. Um, you know, you, these are things that we're just becoming more and more aware of. And I think as the internet you know, and that's the nice thing about the internet. You know, a lot of people, you know, they talk shit about the internet. And you're just like, ah, uh, you know, that's, it's, it's, um, it's not wh whatever, whatever they may, they may say about it. The nice thing about the internet is that you have access to so much information. You have access to so many smart people. You have access to all of this literature, all this information that you can use to better yourself, better your health. Um, and they, it's, it's, I think, eventually we'll get to a point, I think at least that, you know, people are just going to be way more aware of what's damaging their health and what's going to improve their health. And that's, that's my prediction. And that's my hope for the future is that people are just going to be more aware. And there's amazing people out there that every day they're putting out information that's, that's uh, for the betterment of, of humanity. And that's, mm. that's an awesome thing to be a part of, to do myself and to see other people doing so. Yeah. In general, it's just cool that like social media has the ability to bring people together. And then as well as just get, like you said, get the knowledge that people didn't know about health. They're just kind of like, didn't, I mean, we just were evolving as a species and as more science comes out. So mm -hmm. thank you for coming on, man. Um, yeah. How no can people, people uh, follow you and like look out for um, your book and all that? So I'll, I'll, don't worry about the book. I'll announce it and I'll make sure it's, it's people are, will know about it. Uh, Instagram is the grounded athlete. Um, that's where, that's where I'm most active. I'm starting to get more active on Twitter. Like I, I just kind of started finding out about Twitter, like in the past few months and it's been awesome. Mm -hmm. I've met a lot of cool people on that, but uh, Instagram, the grounded athlete, Twitter is duh grounded athlete. So D a grounded athlete. Um, if you Google search or Bing search or, uh, duck, duck, go search the ground that athlete, uh, it'll be the first thing that pops up and on, on those platforms, the, the social pages, the web pages, you'll find everything you want to know about grounding. And I pride myself on being the best source of grounding information on the internet. So if you want to learn about grounding, how it can improve your health, uh, definitely check those out. My email's on there too. Uh, you can get a hold of me. You can DM me, whatever you questions you have. So, and I'll vouch for the sandals there super aesthetic and also comfortable so awesome man awesome yeah all right well thank you for coming on no problem luke good talking to you yep have a good one man